I was asked to talk about the Internet of Medical Things and more specifically IOMT in the ICU. So, uh, okay, let me ask a question. How many non-techies here know what IOT is? Please raise your hands. Okay. How many, okay, let me put it, how many of you don't know what IOT is? So there is a, quite a significant population who doesn't know it. So that's the thing people in the tech sector geeks t tend to assume that everyone knows what they know. So uh, I'm just going ahead with the speech without the slides and uh, hopefully we can catch up. Uh, the question was what is the Internet of Medical Things? So uh, IOMT derives from the Internet of Things. So like everyone who wants to know something, you do a Google search, Wikipedia comes up, this is the Wikipedia definition. So clear, isn't it? I think everyone understands this is from Wikipedia. So now you know what IoT is. Okay. Nah, this is too complicated. It, even I couldn't understand <laughs> what Wikipedia said. So let's break it down. Internet of things. So that's the thing. It's the asset you want to control or monitor. It's whatever you want to measure. Then you have a data acquisition module, which can acquire data, which can be either digital or even analog, which is converted to digital. And then we have a data processing module, which is the computer to process the data. You can do analytics, you can do uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's basically an edge computer, which can do processing right at the point of, uh, point of acquisition. And then we have a communication module, because once you've got the data, you need to be able to send it to wherever you want it, a cloud, local server. So I think that's more representative. And um, how many of you here have an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, or some kind of uh, fitness tracker? Please raise your hands. OK. Well, congratulations. You're the thing in IoT. <laughs> you are now a thing. So, um, so you have variable uh, sensors, fitness sensors, and they're connected to um, uh, the gateway typically, which is your phone. So this is a little more schematic representation. And then it's just moved to the cloud, which allows you to share it. You do your, uh, if you've got an Apple Watch, you finish the rings, and then you share it with your friends, and someone says, congratulations, you've completed your rings. So this IoT devices can be used to, the exciting thing about IoTs are, what's new in them is that they have this capacity to monitor, measure a whole lot of things that earlier was quite expensive and needed more like dedicated sensors, dedicated computers. So I'll just give you a few seconds to digest the screen. So you name it, it can be measured. You want ambient temperature, you want ambient light, sorry, ambient sounds, you want to see humidity. So it gives you these options to monitor almost anything in any environment. So these IoTs also support quite a wide range of wireless protocols. Bluetooth, a lot of people would have heard. NFC maybe, cellular of course. But there are other protocols also like ZigBee, ZLAN, um, sorry, Z-Wave, which are local area wireless or personal area wireless. Moving on, there are even other uh, communication protocols. More interesting here is the wired protocols, Ethernet and Powerline. Um, I hope I'm not running too fast because uh, I know we're pressed for time. So let's come to IOMT in the ICU, which is what I asked to speak about, and more uh, why do we need it. Has, I'm sure everyone has at one time or the other had the opportunity to visit the ICU. If you're a doctor, it's part of your workload. A layperson, I'm sorry, you had to go to an ICU. But <laughs> when you're in an ICU, you see the ICU is full of things. You've got monitors, ventilators, syringe pumps, infusion pumps. It's all these things in the uh, ICU. And more important, what's the most important thing there? Let's not forget the patient. All this is to help the patient. And so a typical ICU has all these devices around and oops. I seem to have missed a slide. But unfortunately what happens is each one of these machines are from different companies, they're in silos, they don't talk to each other. And something that people, or doctors in the ICU know, this is an article I came across, is there are so many Parameters being monitored in a patient, and come on, these patients are critical patients. That's why they're in the ICU, so they're not normal. All sorts of alarms being triggered, beep, beep, beep. And what happens beyond a stage? You just mechanically go and just switch it off because you're not even monitoring it because there's just in sensory overload. More on that article. I know there's a lot of text, um, just, okay. Some of it is bolded, but it's not visible in this in the screen. So we have about six million patients in the US. Again, data is not available for India, who pass through an ICU in every year. 
and the number of medical devices, critical like ventilators, pumps, infusion pumps, etc., they don't talk to each other. They all have alarms. When something's wrong, each one's beeping. At a patient, you've got two beeps, three beeps, and you have alarm fatigue. You just become numb to the noise, and then you just block it out. And a single patient can generate up to 2,000 data points per day. So you can imagine how much data there is. And what if they could all talk to each other? Wouldn't it be nice? We could have smart alarms, a holistic view. You'd have one alarm saying, OK, these are the triggers in this patient, rather than a cacophony of two, three alarms going together. So this is what is excited about the connected health. And IOTs, IOMTs are there to help you with it. And uh, going beyond these traditional monitoring, patient monitoring devices, we can go to what I mentioned earlier. You can measure environment, ambient temperature. What is the position of the bed? You can have a sensor on the bed saying, was the patient in uh, Trendelberg or reverse Trendelberg? Data points that were not being monitored earlier is available. And with more data, we get, uh, get into what's known as big data. And then with big data, we can do analysis, deep learning, machine learning. The opportunities are endless. And the sky is virtually the limit. So this is just a small example at our ICU. Actually, this is the NICU, where we've connected one of the ventilators. And I just have this box for you to see. So this is a, one of our IOMT boxes, which connects the ventilator. You can see it down there, which identifies which patient, which, who's using this ventilator. So the data that comes in from the ventilator is uniquely identified linked to that patient. So um, what? End of the day, what's the point of all this? What's the point of getting all this data? So a few seconds to, if you can have a look at this uh, pyramid. So you've got all this data that's coming in, raw data. Some of it is structured, some of it is unstructured. And then now is when you use your expert knowledge, machine learning, which I was mentioning earlier, to analyze this and ultimately gain insight from all this. You want to learn something new. You want to learn how to do better. And based on the insight, we can take action and improve reduce the cost. Maybe the patient didn't need antibiotics for so long. Maybe the patient didn't need monitoring for so long. So these are things that outcomes can um, improve. Um, so it's not just the ICU. These IoT devices, small devices can monitor you or in your entire, I mean, like the Apple Watch or your smart uh, Fitbit. It's not just the ICU. It can be used to monitor you even when you go home. Um, so it's beyond hospital care. And another thing is, we're talking about IoT, IOMTs for patient point of view, but these IOMTs can also be used to monitor the equipment. Is the ventilator working properly? Information can be sent to the uh, manufacturer. They can do remote monitoring. So it's not just monitoring the patient, it's monitoring themselves and the equipment. So there's a lot of opportunities, logistics, warehousing. IOMT, IoT, I'm using them interchangeably, can be used in a lot of areas. So this is just a brief history of where we, we started and where we are going. Um, it's around the 2000 that RFID started becoming popular. Uh, I think we're on track. And with more and more applications. And you can thank the smartphone revolution for giving us fast processes that are uh, low power and f fairly cheap. So you've got really powerful, I mean, a few years ago these were desktop class processors are now available in IoT devices and can do virtually everything. AI, you name it, machine learning, machine vision. Sorry, computer vision. And we're going on further to telepresence and controlling distant objects. And it's all enabled by software. So um, the title is a little misleading. I, was, uh, I wanted to put a word of caution. So all this is fine. Having IOMTs is nice, fine and dandy. But these are also computers. So we need to make sure that they're secured. This <clears throat> they are vectors, new vectors for security breaches. and with more and more technology, complexity increases, and we have to be sure that we're safeguarding patient data. So um, IMT devices need to be secured, need to be patched. They are computers at the end of the day. And a quick internet search, you just for patient records hacked, and you get up to number of results saying patient results leaked in Singapore, New York, Europe. So we need to be careful. So hopefully by now, I've convinced you guys, you want this IOMT in your ICU. But how do you convince your CEO, CFO? They're going to say, I, you ask me for a ventilator, ultrasound machine, fine. What is this IOMT device? How do I, uh, why should I pay for it? I can give you the magic words. It's just two words. Automated billing. 
with this IOMT devices, you can also link it to your billing system, your charge system. So if a ventilator is used, uh, an infusion pump is used, resource can automatically be billed to the patient. So your, uh, your CFO is now happy. So uh, hopefully that's, you've learned everything about IOMT, and uh, thank you very much.